For those who don't often drink wine, it can be an intimidating field to dive into. What exactly differentiates a glass of dry Sauvignon Blanc from a bold Syrah? Do I like notes of vanilla, oak, and spice in my wine, or more of a lighter citrus variety? These are all fair questions, but let's get one of the biggest misconceptions out of the way first. What exactly makes a good wine? People often think it's the price that determines the quality, but that's just not true. We are in the best time ever for wine and being on a budget because most of the best stuff is under $20. That's Elizabeth Schneider, a certified sommelier, host of the podcast Wine for Normal People, and the author of the book Wine for Normal People, a guide for real people who like wine, but not the snobbery that goes with it. To counteract this snobbery, Schneider uses her expertise to help people think differently about the different flavors, blends, and pairings out there, so that next time you're picking out a bottle, you can try something new with confidence that you'll enjoy what you're tasting. As you're getting to know wine, the most important thing really is if you're really interested in the topic, then you've got to do some reading and you've got to do some background because there's a high barrier to entry and wine is complicated. Anybody that says that wine is easy or that you can be a professional wine person or an expert in 60 seconds or in 10 minutes or in two days, it's just not true. And I think that saying that out loud helps take some of the burden off and don't expect to be an expert right away. It doesn't come easy. And that's part of the joy of it. So you got to embrace that instead of resisting it. Because I think that's part of the problem is that we see that barrier to entry and we go, oh my God, I'll never be that person. You don't have to be that person. You don't have to be a dork like me. But knowing a couple things will get you so far in wine. You just have to be patient with yourself. So starting today, the days of wandering aimlessly through the wine aisle or relying on your waiter to offer up an overpriced recommendation are over. To start off, it's important to loosely understand the process of winemaking. The grapes grown to make wine are different than the grapes you'd find at your local grocery store. Wine grapes have seeds that are smaller, sweeter, and have thicker skins. After the grapes are harvested and crushed, they're fermented and aged for several months or years, so there's a rare chance that a barrel can go bad during this process. Because of this, it's important to learn what a wine should never look or smell like. You look at a wine, you see, does it look okay? I feel like if you had food, you would take that food and look at it before you popped it in your mouth, right? But... People don't do that with wine, and it's crazy because wine is an agricultural product, and it's a product of chemical processes, and it also goes through a lot of transportation. So you should always look at your wine. Also, there's the issue of cork, so cork could be floating in your wine. You should always look at it first. So I always look at it to make sure it looks okay, and I think we go from the least offensive sense to the most offensive or most intrusive sense. So first you look at it. That's not going to kill anybody. Then you smell it and you make sure, does it smell okay to me? Not do I like it, but is it something that smells okay? Does it smell like a wet, dirty dog or potpourri or something nasty? If that's the case, then likely something went wrong in all of those processes of making it and you can't drink it. But if your wine doesn't smell like burnt rubber or a wet dog, you're all clear of potential poisoning and can move forward. Now, getting into the different categories of wine, Obviously, the two broad distinctions are red and white varietals. In red wines, you can expect fruity or tart flavors, such as plum, cherry, or black currant, layered with bolder aromas, like vanilla, leather, pepper, or nutmeg. Merlot is a good introductory red, because it's in the middle of the pack. It's smooth, fruity, and relatively easy to drink. When it comes to white wines, you'll taste more flowery, buttery, citrus-forward elements that can range from lemon to pear to other more tropical fruits. If you're looking for a sweeter white wine, try a glass of Riesling or Moscato. If you prefer a dry but bold taste, 
find a Chardonnay with notes of apple and pear. Is it fruity or is it something else first? I think that that does an enormous amount for grounding you in what to expect from the wine. I think because wine is made from grapes, a lot of times we think, oh, it should be fruity. It should taste like fruit. But that's not always the case. Again, because I said, you know, it's agriculture and it's different grapes from the stuff that we just pop in our mouths from table grapes. So these grapes all have different qualities. So you've got to see, okay, is it fruit first or is it smell earthy? And then does it taste good? Does it taste like things that I like? Does it have good mouth drying qualities that make it good with food? That may not be good by itself, but it's really good with food. Or acidity underneath your tongue, waters and waters and waters. Those things make wine fantastic. Each wine is different because of its origin and the earthiness of the soil the grapes grow on. The type of oak barrel that it's aged in also matters because it infuses different spices and notes depending on the wood. If you tend to like bolder, funkier cheeses, try wines from Italy, France, or Spain. If you prefer cleaner, smoother notes, try a bottle from New Zealand or Australia. By this point, you can see that the world of wine is complex and it's a journey. But before you spend money on a bottle or case of wine, Schneider says narrow down your field of focus. So my advice is, and I know that this is sort of coming from a wine dork perspective, before you go into the store is where the action is. Don't walk into a wine store not knowing what you want to get. You'll get lost. So maybe do a little bit of research. Maybe see, okay, think about what you might be eating. Do you want a red or a white? As soon as you make the decision about whether you want a red wine or a white wine, a bubbly or a sweet wine, whatever, you've already cut down half the store, right? So that's really helpful. And if you've committed to trying many different varietals, look for a wine shop near you that you actually like. When that person who you really hope is not snotty or maybe they're not snotty. A lot of people who work in wine shops absolutely know nothing about wine. It's not their fault. They're not trained, but they start talking about things. You have no idea what they're talking about. You'll already say, I want a fruity red wine. I want a wine that's going to go with this that I'm having for dinner. I want a pizza wine. That is going to help enormously. If you're getting a couple of bottles for the week, just try to get a sense of why you want that wine. It will save you money. It will point you in new directions. And the other thing I would tell you is do some wine shop dating. Pick out a couple shops and find the people you feel comfortable with. Everybody's got their wine tribe, as I call it. And maybe you like the really snotty place, but maybe you don't. Maybe you want somebody who's down to earth and can explain things in a good way. So all those things factor in. The most important factor to keep in mind is patience. Jot down the types you've tried and the flavors, acidity, and aftertaste you taste and smell. Sometimes you'll be surprised by what you unexpectedly like. To learn more about wine and our guest, Elizabeth Schneider, visit winefornormalpeople.com. Also find her book, Wine for Normal People, a guide for real people who like wine, but not the snobbery that goes with it, on amazon.com. To find links to additional wine resources, head over to viewpointsradio.org. This segment was written and produced by Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Coming up next week. I think it is one of the most valuable and underrated things that you can get into. Reaping the many benefits of growing your own produce. Then. There's so much fear and anxiety and uncertainty in the world today. Boy, who would have thought that 2020 would be quite this kind of a year. Facing the emotional roller coaster that is this year. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of Media Tracks Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Viewpoints.